Hello everyone, welcome to Dakshna e Classroom program. So today I am going to write, like show you a video solution for DT04 NEET exam. I hope everyone tried their best in the exam. Many of you might have got the, your score. Many of you must be happy with the score. Some of you might not be. No need to worry to everyone like because this is not your final exam. Here you need to like look at your score, you need to look at your like uh, mistakes you have committed in your exam and try to work on that. Those who have done good, you can mark it like your good topic, you can like strong uh, this topic in your strong like list and those who are not like uh, you have not done that much well, you need to look at these things, this topic and revise it again look at try to find out your mistakes try to find out your shortcomings in this uh, like in this topic and work on that and uh, here video solution will help you in understanding the questions uh, those like you are not able to solve in exam because the concept will help you understanding more like better and it will help you later on to solve similar type of problem or same problem if it is asked later so let's uh, discuss the solution so first problem the Young's modulus of a uh, wire of length L and radius R is given as Y. The length of the radius R reduced by L by 2 and radius R by 2, then its Young's modulus will be. <coughs> so, question number 1 here for a wire, Young's modulus is given and it's asking about like if we are changing its radius and length, then what will be the new Young's, Young's modulus? So, you must be knowing Young's modulus is a property of material, so it does not depend on the geometrical parameters, so that's why. The Young's modulus will remain same and answer will be V and it will be same. So next question 2. If a longitudinal strain, a X longitudinal strain is produced. So here strain epsilon is equal to X and uh, in a wire of Young's modulus, Young's modulus is given as Y. Y and now you are, it is asking the energy stored in the material of the wire per unit volume so energy stored that is energy density you must be its sigma into epsilon stress multiplied by strain is the energy density elastic energy density here epsilon is given straightforward and i can write y is equal to stress upon strain this implies stress is equal to what y and strain is here x x y so then substituting here i am getting u energy density is equal to 1 by 2 y x into x that is half y into x square and your answer matches with option d so it's d is the correct answer question number three uh, okay the temperature of wire of length 1 meter and area of cross section so length of the wire is 1 meter area of the cross section is 1 centimeter square that means 10 is power minus 4 meter square its area of cross section of the wire and the is in, uh, increased from okay so its temperature is increased temperature from 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius okay let me re read it again the temperature of a length uh, temperature of a wire of length 1 meter and area of cross section this increased from 0 to 100 degree celsius if the rod is not allowed to increase in length then force required okay so see what is happening here here we have one rod and its length initial is given temperature initial t naught is given and everything is alpha is also given to you here so alpha for this wire is alpha is given as 10 raised to power minus 5 per degree celsius and y young's modulus is given as 10 to power 11 newton per meter square so everything is given to you now simple thing is if we are heating it it will try to expand but what we want we want its length not to expand we want its length to remain constant for that you need to apply some force from both side so it's mentioned that length must remain constant then how much force f need to be applied so i can write if it is allowed to expand freely then delta l is equal to what l alpha delta t change in temperature but because it is not allowed so means i can say or i can understand it that it's let's say allowed and then it's being compressed so that the compression is equal to this so then a strain i can write it's delta l by l 
is equal to alpha delta t. So I got the strain developed in this and force. So we know Young's modulus is equal to stress force upon area multiplied by strain and this implies force required is equal to y a into epsilon and you can substitute the value y is 10 is to power 11 a is equal to 1 into 10 is to power minus 4 into epsilon is alpha 10 is to power minus 5 into delta d is 100 and solving we are getting force is equal to this is uh, 9 11 10 is to power 4 newton this is your answer next question number 4 i hope you understood this question number 3 so question number 4 here Aluminium rod Young's modulus so aluminium rod in Young's modulus is given as 7 into 10 to power 9 Newton per meter square It has breaking strain so epsilon breaking It's given in percent is 0.2 percent. That means it will 0.02 breaking strain the minimum cross-sectional area of the rod in order to support and force need to be supported is 10 to the power 4 newton so you are asked here to find the minimum area of cross section so we can write again y is equal to force divided by area of cross section multiplied by strain here this is given this is also given we want to apply this much amount of force then what should be the area of cross section so that this maximum limit of the strain should be equal to this so we just need to substitute here and substituting i can write the the result directly substituting the value here f uh, we are supposed to find area this implies area is equal to force divided by y into epsilon just need to substitute force is equal to 10 to power 4 divided by this is a uh, 7 into 10 to power 9 multiplied by 0 0.002 if you solve it you will get the answer that matches with that is 7.1 into 10 to power minus 4 minus 4 meter square so this is the area required question number 5 next so a steel ring of radius small r cross sectional area capital a is fitted onto a wooden disc of radius so question number 5 this is a steel ring steel ring radius small r need to be fit on a wooden disc of radius capital R it's a area of cross section this area of cross section is given as A so that is all given if Young's modulus of the wire is E is Young's modulus it's given then force with which the steel ring is expanded so now with what force you need to expand the steel ring that force is asked if uh, like Young's modulus is there then the force with which the steel ring is expanded is to, uh, ex to be so first you need to understand the problem here this disc is it's given capital R is greater than a small r that means ring is small so we need to apply some force we need to expand that so that the size is just becoming equal to disc size in that case it will fit and then you release then it will contract again so that will be the mechanism i think you can understand it very easily straightforward okay so now to fit it the initial length l initial of this ring will be equal to i can write 2 pi r the final length after it should be equal to 2 pi r so the change in length you can write 2 pi capital r minus a small r and epsilon is equal to delta l by l and that is 2 pi capital r minus small r divided by 2 pi small r so this is the strain we are asked to find young's modulus is given e so we can write e is equal to force divided by area of cross section is given a and a strain is this 2 pi gets cancelled this is r minus small r multiplied by r so force required is given by e multiplied by a multiplied by capital r minus small r divided by small r and this is your answer which matches with fifth option question number fifth it's equal to b this is fifth answer is matches with the b so let me just erase this part first okay so next problem number six so here we are given two rod steel and brass and they are coefficient of linear expansion alpha 1 alpha 2 their initial length l1 and l2 and it's mentioned and uh, 
it's saying that the condition is l2 minus l1 this difference must remain constant even on heating okay so will remain same for the temperature like at all temperature so if on heating this become let's say i can write l1 plus alpha 1 into delta t or delta theta i can write l2 will become l2 plus alpha 2 delta theta then what is the difference in length it comes l2 minus l1 that is coming out to be l2 minus l1 plus or alpha 2 delta theta minus l1 minus alpha 1 delta theta this is l2 minus l1 plus alpha uh, just wait 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 this will be l1 l1 l2 and then it will be l2 here also it will be l1 this and it is then it is coming out to be l2 alpha 2 minus l1 alpha 1 into delta theta and now it is saying this difference l2 minus l1 should be equal to so this should be equal to this cancelled out means this quantity should be equal to 0 this implies l1 alpha 1 must be equal to l2 alpha 2 for this difference in length to be remain constant and your option matches here with like answer d answer matches next question number seventh so in which case there is maximum extension in the wire if same force is applied so if force f is applied then we know actually y is equal to force upon area into delta l multiplied by l clear it's talking about the maximum extension so delta l is given by f l divided by area into y clear so you it's saying here in which case there is maximum extension of the wire of same force applied on each wire so in this situation force is constant and same material is also given basically we are not supposed to do the calculation for different yeah, materials so that's why we can write delta l is directly proportional to length inversely proportional to area of cross section so whichever the wire is having this maximum so means length should be high and radius should be low that will have maximum extension and you can just look at it so length it's like uh, uh, 300 200 500 so you need to check it actually and we will get because radius for like uh, d part it's the lowest so it will have like max smallest so delta l will have maximum contribution from there solving and checking you will get actually d has max this maximum value or maximum extension next question number eight so here a siphon uses in demonstration at the in the following diagram the density of the liquid flowing in piston is this the pressure difference between the two point p and s so it will be like uh, here pressure difference p s minus p p will be zero as both points are are like open to atmosphere so the temperature uh, sorry pressure of both point will be simply atmosphere pressure because they are lying on the surface of liquid so both p s equal to p p equal to p atm so that's why difference is equal to zero question number nine here option will match with the c and question number nine density of ice is rho and density of water so ice density is rho and water density it's given as sigma this is given what will be the decrease in volume when a mass m of ice melt so m ice mass melt what is the volume of volume of ice you can write this you can write rho is equal to what density mass upon volume so volume is equal to mass divided by rho volume of ice volume of water is equal to because mass will remain same so mass divided by its density and we know actually this will be higher so the shrinking it's asking about uh, decrease in volume so delta v is equal to v ice minus v water that is coming out to be m 1 by rho minus 1 by sigma and this answer matches with your option c question number 10 if two liquids of same mass so two liquids mass m m density rho 1 and rho 2 right so what is the volume so volume v1 i can write it's m divided by rho 1 volume v2 can be written as m divided by rho 2 then then if they are mixed together then and you are asked to find the density of the mixture so the density of mixture rho 
mixture is given by total mass m total divided by total volume and total mass is equal to 2m total volume is m by rho 1 plus m by rho 2 and cancelling it and we are getting it's 2 rho 1 rho 2 divided by rho 1 plus rho 2 and this is your answer which matches with again option c so okay next question number 11 uh, speed is a little bit fast you can pause it if you are still having some problem in any case and look at it all right so 11 is solid sphere of density eta so here uh, this solid sphere density its density is eta times eta times higher than eta is greater than one eta times okay that's uh, high eta times lighter than water is suspended in water tank by a string tied to its base as one in the mass of the sphere is m okay then the tension in the string is given by so here mass of this sphere it's suspended is m so it will have like tension you can write its v thrust force minus mg and thrust force can be written as v into density of water rho water into v rho g minus this is m into g and uh, density here because uh, it's given in terms of like okay so if i say density of this sphere is sigma then density of water rho then i can write rho is equal to what rho is the density uh, sorry this is equal to eta times lighter so this is sigma yeah sigma is equal to rho by eta you can write rho is equal to eta times sigma and uh, let me explain it sphere whose density is eta times lighter than density of water if i take density of sphere this density of water this eta is greater than so it should be lighter that means density of uh, sphere must be density of water divided by eta eta greater than one so this quantity will be less than density of water then only it can float so this is the density relation if volume of this sphere is v then i can write thrust force is this and weight is this now rho water can be replaced as this so then it i will get p sigma eta g minus mg when this is the mass of this sphere then substituting you will get m g you can take out its eta minus one and this is the tension which is your answer so which matches with option d here all right so it's up to question number 11. okay so next question number 12 in the following figure as shown the liquid through a horizontal Five. Three tubes A, B, C are connected. You must be seeing this uh, question in your diagram in your paper. The radii of the tube A, B, C are at this junction are respectively 2 cm, 1 cm, and 2 cm. So it means at A and C the radii are equal, at B the radii is less. It can be said. So then by Bernoulli's principle here we need to apply actually and the continuity equation. So by continuity equation I can say the velocity at point B will be higher compared to velocity at point A and C. And we must be knowing from Bernoulli's principle that higher is the velocity, higher is the speed, lower is the pressure. And at A and C, the velocity is equal, it's at same level, so pressure will be same. So the column of length of the height of the column will be also equal. So you can match the option according to that. So height of the column in tube A and C is same. So D option you match this here. Is the correct option because VA is equal to VC and this is less than VB. And by Bernoulli's principle, you can write PA is will be equal to PB, uh, sorry, BC and less than PB. And this implies HD will be equal to HC and height of this is less than HD. This would be the condition. Question number 13. A L J blast tube is just immersed in water, flowing water such that its opening is pointing against flowing water in the speed of the water. So here simple thing like speed means standing head of the water will get converted into potential. It just immerses in potential like pressure difference because of the height of the water is low because you need to look at the language of the problem. L J blast tube just immersed. That's why here I can write pressure has uh, Sorry, kinetic head half rho b square must be rho g h. It 
is cancelled, this implies x is coming out to be b squared by And this will be matching with your option A. So question number 14. A wooden block with coin placed on its top float in the water as shown in the figure. The coin, uh, sorry, the distance L and H are shown there. After some time, the coin fall into the water. Then, all uh, right. So it's logical question actually. Here we are given a wooden block like this, and one small coin is placed over it. So you must be knowing the coin is actually made of metal. This and here it's given. This height is given as H and uh, this height is given as F. So now you must be seeing here the weight of coin will be higher because it has like metal density. So with the wood, so that like this coin can float, the wood has to submerge more so that more thrust force can be applied, buoyancy force can be applied. So that's why I can say like uh, if the coin was not there, then it would be like less volume, less food will be there. Understanding? So coin was not there, maybe only it's dipped up to there. Now what is happening here actually? When coin is falling, it will rise by more amount, but the coin is falling in the water. So the volume of the liquid rises by coin will be small compared to the volume of the liquid sinking because this comes out. So then you can see the L will decrease and this liquid level will also fall so both L and H will decrease. Both as volume of coin is less than volume of wood inside. Right now. So once the to balance the weight, so once the coin fall, less volume will go inside, more volume will come outside, less volume of coin. Next 
17. An astronomy in an astronomical telescope in a normal adjustment, a straight black line of length. L is drawn on the objective lens. The eyepiece form a real image of this line. The length of this image is L. Magnification of telescope. All right. So here we have one objective lens and the eyepiece. On this lens, one line is drawn. So basically, this line will act like an object. And here, the one we can write the U will be separation between. These two is given by some of the focal length of these two lenses. So now, what is happening? This object. This line will act like and work like an object for this lens and it will form some image. Clear? So, focal length, I will write focal length is equal to this is objective, this will be eyepiece, focal length, the separation between, so this is u, if you take with direction, it will be minus, then I can take d. So, 1 by d minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f, this is 1 by v, minus minus 2 is I can write because u will be actually minus f naught plus f. So if I substitute f0 plus f e equal to 1 upon f Clear? So then solving it, I will get v. This is coming out. We take that side. And f solving it v, I am getting this is f0 plus f e multiplied by f e divided by f0 plus f e, that is f0. So this is v. Right? The magnification. by eyepiece lens this is given by b by u and u is this so this comes out to be i can write mod that will be coming out to be f e divided by f o and this is equal to what f e it's l divided by capital l remember this is the magnification of eyepiece it's not magnification of what telescope is it so telescope magnification for normal adjustment, magnification of telescope for normal adjustment that is given by F objective divided by F eyepiece and that will come out to be capital L by smaller and this will be the answer because it's asking the magnification of telescope not that eyepiece. So this is up to question number 17 and your, your answer matches with A option. Okay, let's see next question number 18. Okay, next question number 18. Three lenses M1, L2, L3 are placed at co-axilia shown in the figure. Focal length of lenses are also given. If the par parallel beam of light fall on lens L1 emerges L from L3 as conversion beam. Beam such that compresses at focus of L3 distance uh, right between L1 and L2. So here you are given three lenses this L1, next L2, next L3. This is the system given and the separation between them is given as D. Okay? So that is the situation given here now. The distance between L1 and L3. Parallel beam is falling and it's given finally the beam is actually this is the final situation. So what it implies? F3. This implies and here focal length is also given. This is 30 centimeter and here it's 10 centimeter and here it's half much. So it's also given as 5 centimeter. These are focal lengths. So now just look at it logically, we can answer it straightforward without going for mathematical terms here. So finally the ray are conversed at focus, that means here the rays must be coming parallel. When they can come parallel, when they, the rays must be coming from the focus, then we will try to diverse. So the coming rays from the focus, then we will try to what? And same. So concave mirror or concave lens. Here the parallel rays are coming. Then it diverts like this, it appears it's coming from the focus. Understanding? So they will be like this. So if uh, I can say here, uh, just, 
Okay, yes. So if here we know this is the situation, and now if uh, like I can say if these rays are supposed to be meeting here, then it will try to diverge actually, and they will be like made parallel because on its like if uh, the rays from this is formed at like this point, the diagram is exactly not proper but to the scale. It will try to actually like this, this, but these will be like diverged. Is it? Here uh, you can write this, these rays. So these will be like uh, rays coming. So it will like, uh, if the, I can say the rays are coming from this side, just for understanding purpose. If I say rays are coming from this side, parallel rays, then it will appear to be like uh, merging at or like uh, forming at here. Is it? Because they will diverge in this manner. Okay, so actually the here proper diagram will be something like this. Rays coming here from a pretty parallel. It will try to converse and focus, but before focus we are placing more diverging lens so that this where like image is forming is the focus of this, then it will what is that? You can see it's coming uh, like converging at focus, but it's diverging lens, it will diverse make them parallel because rays are coming from focus. Here you can say they will be appearing like coming from this focus. So now this I can write this distance must be equal to what? Focal length of this lens and the actual like you can see this will be your virtual object. That will be like a image of this lens that will be acting like a virtual object for second lens. So this must be at the focus of second lens. Then I can write this distance will be also equal to F2 and then only it will be parallel and finally it's forming image at the at three because Parallel rays can be only converged at focus. So this implies D. D can be written as easily. This is F1 minus F2. Then this is 30 centimeter minus 10 centimeter, and D will be equal to 20 centimeter. You can go for it mathematically also. Exactly, the calculus will be a little bit lengthy. Here you can still propagate it uh, by just looking at the diagram. You need to match it properly. So this is our question number 80, and option will match here with answer C. Next question number 19. An object is placed at a point distance x from the focus of the converging lens. An image is formed as one in the figure. The distance x, x prime satisfies the condition. So here, for this condition, this is the situation given. This is f, this is f prime, f, and this is x, this distance. And this distance is given as x prime. So finally, this is your object and image is formed here. Image and this is the object. Real image is formed and that is possible when like this distance plus this distance, uh, here I can write x plus x prime plus 2f must be greater than or equal to 4f. And solving it, we are getting x plus x prime must be greater than or equal to 2f. So that is your answer. Message with option D. Next question number 20. Okay, so next question number 20, here we have The diameter of the eye ball of normal eye is about 2.4 cm The power of the eye lens varies from It's uh, so here actually eye, eye lens So here whatever the, wherever the object is there The final image has to form at this within this So I can write the V Image distance for the final lens will be equal to what? It's 2.5 cm so the eye lens try to adjust the focal length. One for the object placed at infinity, that is become relaxed eye. So in this situation, u will be equal to what? Infinity and v will be equal to what? 2.5 centimeters. So what should be the focal length? One upon focal length will be the power of that lens. So I can write one upon this is 2.5 centimeter. It's given 2.5 centimeter, right? Yes, 2.5 centimeters, so minus 2, minus 1 upon infinity, this is 1 upon f, and this implies f, I'm getting this is 40, uh, 1 upon f, that is power, this is 40 diameter. So this is 40 diameter, uh, power of the lens, eye lens, for relaxed condition. Next case, it is a uh, constraint. 
you can write final image will be what? Again at 2.5 cm, but object must be at minus 25 cm. So in this situation, you can write 1 upon b, 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2, minus minus plus 1 upon this is 25 cm, so this is minus 2 equal to 1 upon f. Is it? And from here, solving p get actually 1 upon f is equal to power comes out to be 44. The range of the uh, like uh, power of i should be from 40 diameter to 44, and that will be matched with option D. Next question number 21. In a thin spherical bowl, fish bowl of uh, radius 10 cm filled with water of refractive index. So here, here it is given. This is a face. Here it's face. This is fist wall and this is 4 cm and radius is given as 10 cm that means this is 6 cm and like person is observing observer here on this side and radius of curvature also given 10 cm so it is asked to you now like a liquid refractive index mu is 4 by 3 that is what so in a thin spherical fist bowl of radius 10 cm filled with water of refractive is 4 by 3. There is a small uh, face at the distance 4 cm from the center C as well in the figure. Where will the image of the face appear? If it is C from this side, this one. So that is a simple like straight uh, formula based problem for single curve refractor refraction. So we can write mu here. This is medium 1, this is medium 2. So I can write mu 2 by V minus mu 1 by U is equal to mu 2 minus mu 1 by r. Mu 2 1 by v minus mu 1 it's 4 by 3 and u is basically you can write minus 6 and this is 1 minus 4 by 3 and divided by r is minus 10. Solving 1 by v equal to this will be coming out to be 1 2 by 9 minus uh, minus and plus this will be 1 by 30 and uh, we are getting solving for v, we can take it uh, 1 upon v, this is 90, this is minus uh, right, 20, uh, this is the LCM, plus 3, that will be minus 17 by 90, so v will be equal to 19 by 70, minus, and that comes out to be after solving 5.2. This is the position of the fish that will appear to the observer looking from point E in this situation. Okay, so next question number 22. Here it's given this is a lens, this distance, this is 0 0.2 meter, one face is here at 0 0.4 meter. So this is all given. Then uh, observer is looking from here. So first real depth is this 0.6 but let me write apparent d apparent that will be equal to 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 divided by mu and that is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 divided by 4 by 3 that is coming out to be 0 0.5 meter and focal length of this lens is given as how much focal length of the lens is given as 3 meter so I can write 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F and V is equal to UF divided by U plus F substituting the values U is minus 0 0.5 into F is 3 divided by 3 minus 0 0.5 and solving it basically uh, this comes out to be minus uh, just one second u into f uh, that's correct all so this is uh, after solving you will get a uh, 3 into 0 0.5 divided by its 2.5 minus and it's like 5 and it will be coming v is coming out to be 0 0.6 meter so now it's asking so that will be this distance will be from lens and actually that is equal to coinciding with the exact actual position of the face so here the image of the face seen by the observer will be at same location of face d will be your right option
and question number 23 a water drop in the air refract the light ray as so you must have seen like actually a drop drop water drop actually water drop will be acting uh, is actually a thick lens and because it will be spherical this way so it act acts like thick convex lens then convex lens so if parallel rays are coming it will try to converse at the focus and that will match with option b next question number 24 uh, 24 which of the following ray diagram shows graphically possible refraction so here you can see actually there are two medium rare medium denser medium and basic principle basic law of reflection must be followed if it is going from rare to denser medium then it must be bending towards the normal and vice versa so here in situation one it's going from rare to denser and you can see it's bending towards normal that means it's possible correct answer in second situation it's going from uh, denser to rare medium and actually it's that is not possible at all here this is this is normal here the system is given like this so like it can't bend that much actually in that to it's going yeah it is going from rare to denser medium it should bend but it should bend this way not even like that much bend so that it's crossing even the normal so b is not possible similarly c it's going from denser rare to uh, sorry denser to rare medium and uh, it's basically yes no, no, it's going from rare to denser medium and diverting like going away from the normal that is also not possible so only first one is the possible case 25 next one following figures so here some situation is given to you this this here this like this here ray entering so law of reflection will be followed exactly whatever the angle this is 30 degree it will also reflect at 30 degree now 30 degrees it will also reflect at 30 degree 30 degree 30 degree and now you can see this is 30 degree then it must be 60 degree so it must be reflecting with 60 degree also now here this will be 60 degree again here also it will be reflection 60 degree 60 60 and this is 60 then it will be 30 and this will be 30 so you can see the reflection angle here 30 30 60 60 30 and you can match it with option c question number 26 when a rectangular metal tank is filled to top with an unknown liquid the observer with eye level at the top of the can just see the corner of the refractive index of the liquid so here you can see the situation for question number 26 here tank is filled this way and observer is just able to see this is the condition so the ray must be going this way this is the normal and uh, this is your theta c and finally it's going this way 90 degree so mu is the so here i can write mu sine theta c is equal to what one here refractive index one and angle of uh, like uh, refraction is also 90 degrees so sine 90 degree this implies sine theta c is equal to 1 by mu and 1 by mu is actually mu is the value we need to find so this is given and from the data given provided to us this height is 3 centimeter this is 4 centimeter so that definitely this is 5 centimeter and the value of sine theta is equal to what sine theta is equal to 4 by 5 and this implies 1 upon mu and that implies mu is equal to what 5 by 4 5 by 4 and mu will be equal to 1.25 something so option matches here with 1.2 that is your actually a option next question number 26 27 i hope you people are following it a concave mirror and converging lens so one is mirror and that is concave another is lens converging 
converging lens so two conditions are given to you uh, like their focal length uh, both having uh, sorry like lens is having mu is 1.5 and uh, focal length both have focal length 3 cm and 3 cm this is the condition for both the lenses when they are in water then they are new focal length so you must be knowing that mirror if you are changing the medium focal length doesn't does not change so mirror focal length will remain 3 cm but yes for lens it changes so i can write lens it's 1 by f mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 when it is placed in air when it's in some medium then it is mu glass mu medium minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is given as 3 centimeter everything is given just substitute the then you will get f medium is coming out to be 4 times of f air and this will be 12 centimeters so focal length of lens will become 12 centimeter and mirror will still remain 3 centimeter and your a will be right answer okay next question number 28 let me write that too so 28 here you are given this 45 degree so definitely it will be 45 degrees so here deviation will be 90 degree but now it is passing through a prism this way uh, just oppose it so prism is thin so it will also try to deviate it and you must be knowing it actually deviate towards bend it towards the base so here I can write deviation by prism will be given by mu minus 1 into a mu is how much mu is given as 1.5 so it's 0.5 a is given as 4 that is equal to 2 degree so what is the total 90 plus 2 that is total deviation is 92 degree this is a right option and that will be c so it is up to question number 20 eight okay next question number 29 so here it is given a glass a slab of glass of thickness three, six centimeter refractive index 1.5 is placed in front of the concave mirror the faces of the slab being perpendicular to the principal axis of the mirror the radius of the curvature of the mirror is 40 centimeter and reflected image coincide with the object the distance of the object from the mirror so distance of so the, here the condition is like this actually this is a mirror one thin like its thickness is t and it's placed perpendicular to the principal axis like this so what will be some object must be placed here it is going this way it will be like banding and then away like this and it must be retracing its path so it will be like uh, just this way then it will be uh, just one one second let me draw the diagram properly okay so the situation will be ex actually like this exactly like actually object is placed here ray is going like this way and it's shifted this normal like normal shift by the slab and shift we can calculate by the formula this and if i substitute it here 6 multiplied by 1 by 1 by 1.5 we are getting it 2 centimeter so the for the mirror it will appear that actually object is placed here and it is given the mirror is forming uh, like image at its same location means ray must retrace so means this distance must be equal to what radius of curvature that is 40 centimeter is it now it is asking like the, we are should actually object place so if we are placing object actually here then the image like to the mirror it will appear the object is here so we need to place the object two centimeter back away further so that after shifting the object is appearing here then it will try to form image at same location because it is at center of curvature so if an object is placed at the center of curvature of mirror its image is exactly at same point so this implies uh, shift we got this so we need to place this distance must be two centimeter so the distance of object 
from mirror should be how much that is 40 plus 2 that is 42 centimeter next question 30 all uh, right a point source of uh, light s is placed at the bottom of the vessel containing liquid of refractive index 5 by 3 person is viewing the source is viewing the source from the above the surface there is an opaque disc of radius 1 cm floating on the surface of the liquid the center of the disc lies vertically above the surface source okay the liquid from the vessel is gradually drained out that through a tap okay the maximum height of the liquid for which the source cannot be seen so here you must be understanding this phenomena what is exactly happening here in this situation this is the condition the thing is that if liquid is up to here and source is placed here you can see there will be what TIR after some time so if the disk size is sufficient up to here so that TIR is taking place this height is your h and its radius is r so as a, this is your theta c then if just like uh, where the disc is getting over uh, just ending beyond that there must be always tir then no light ray will come out and nobody will be able to see the source if uh, disc is like say this side and light is coming from here then uh, anybody can see it so the size should be related in this manner theta c so now here, here what is given actually mu is given mu is equal to 5 by 3 so here i can write sin theta c should be equal to what mu in critical condition and uh, sin theta c so this can be also written as sin theta c will be also equal to what r divided by under root r square r square plus h square because this distance will be so this divided by this i am getting it and this is equal to mu simplifying it i am getting here actually just uh, multiplying this is mu square r square r square h square and we are getting h is equal to what this is uh, r times under root mu square minus 1 right so substituting the values here you will get and solving you will get actually r we are given actually r is uh, given as 1 centimeter mu is given 5 by 3 and substituting here h you will come out to be 1.33 centimeter this is your answer for question number 30 next question number 31 figure shows a simple potentiometer circuit of uh, measuring small emf produced by a thermo couple the meter wire pq has resistance okay so the setup here is this battery given this resistance and this is pq right it's given pq and here we have galvanometer connected and this balance length is at 0 0.6 meter so here uh, if its resistance is r its resistance is given 5 its emf is given as 2 so i i can write it's 2 divided by r plus 5 then potential drop across this will be equal to v i can write ps is equal to 2 divided by r plus 5 multiplied by 0 0.5 0 0.6 multiplied by 5 one meter length has five ohm resistance then how much is the resistance of this length that is multiplied by this so this i into r will be the potential drop across ps and this is the potential measured that is given as how much six milliampere uh, millivolt six ten to the minus three volt so now we have here only like unknown r just simplified simple things gets cancelled one it's all gone so r plus five is coming out to be thousand this implies r is equal to nine nine five ohm this is answer for question number 31 next is 32 find the equivalent resistance between the source of the terminal battery okay so here the system is this 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 here and this so automatically i have removed battery already so these are points let's say terminals of battery across which we need to find the resistance and here it's given this is 8 ohm this is also 8 ohm 
and it's mentioned as uh, things are not clearly visible here this is 10 ohm this is 15 ohm and this is given as i think just one second it's printing not proper so it's like i think it's given as 6 ohm all right i am telling you the approach you just do the calculation part here the thing is between a b we need to find the r equivalent so what will happen these two in parallel that you will get 4 ohm solving 6 ohm in series these two in parallel so you can get 15 into 10 divided by 150 you will get this then this in series with this so total this and this in parallel and solving you will get actually r equivalent it comes out to be 5 ohm just check this value and solve it this way these two will be in parallel after removing the battery we need to find actually r equivalent across these two terminals so doing that we will consider these two in parallel so it will be like 4 and in series with 6 so it will be like 10 and this is one arm now between this you can see actually because this point and this point it's same thing so here you can see these two are in parallel so you can get r equivalent for this part and this in series with this so now this complete and this complete all in parallel then you will get on solving you will get 5 ohm resistance next question number 33 the figure shows here portion of the circuit what are the magnitude and direction of the current in the so here we need to you need to apply simple Kirchhoff's current law net current at any point incoming must be equal to outgoing and uh, you can get it straightforward I'm solving you will get answer here B that is 8 ohm and it will be in this arm you can get even direction so if I draw a 2 ampere current is coming and from here actually this is 4 ampere and here also comes 2 ampere if you just check it then it will come 6 ampere and it will be coming so direction will be this and 8 ampere will be the current this is given as i question number 34 carbon resistor has color code as this so this is also you can go directly conceptual ways you can solve it you will get answer will be like something 740 plus minus 5 percent that will be nearby matching with 741 741 ohm 35 here option will be your 34 option b 35 voltmeter 100 ohm and this what will be the reading of the voltmeter okay so for this system you can treat it this is your battery voltmeter this resistance resistance and this so here resistance it's 500 ohm 500 ohm and this voltmeter is not ideal actually it has resistance so you can treat it this is simply a resistance of 1000 ohm now what you can do you can get r equivalent for this plus this and this is battery of how much 10 volt so in that situation i think uh, i can erase this part or otherwise let me solve it here so this will be like solving it this R equivalent will be like 1000 divided by 3 plus this 500 it will be 2500 divided by 3 so the current in this I is given by 10 divided by 2500 multiplied by 3 this is the current now potential drop across this is actually the reading that voltmeter will give so reading of the voltmeter V is given by I multiplied by this R equivalent so this is uh, coming out to be 30 divided by 2500 multiplied by 1000 divided by 3, 3, 3 gets cancelled and this you are getting V is equal to 2 zeros to 5 to 4 volt will be your answer. So that is up to problem number 35. Okay, next question number 36. So here you are given a circuit, circuit ammeter and these two register connected this way to a battery and that is this is 20 volt and it's given as 3 ohm this is given as 2 ohm this is also given as 2 ohm and switch is there switch so now it is asking in the circuit zone the reading of the ammeter when switch s is uh, open and when switch s is closed respectively so as 
open then you can write 3 plus 2 5 so current will be like i will be reading of ammeter that will be 20 divided by 5 that is 4 ampere when switch s is closed then what will happen these two will be in parallel so r equivalent will become 1 1 plus 3 it will be 4 4 and 20 divided by 4 so i 2 will be equal to 20 divided by 4 that is 5 ampere question number 36 next is 37 here option will be matching uh, with 4 and 5 that's b option next one 37 a battery is connected uh, to a uniform resistance ab as shown in the graph below how the current density so the current density here j is given by i multiplied by a so first thing is when like we are in the circuit when b is earth there is no current flowing to the ground actually the complete current will be flowing in the arm ab and current i will be constant area is constant so that's why i can write from a to b or b to a current density j must be constant now you can check which option is matching zero no decreasing no also then uh, next part it's a c increasing no d so d is its constant from like here a to b and this will be your j so this will be answered and that is your d question number 38 a wire having resistance 20 volt band in this form so this system is equivalent to this this is uh, termed as like which is terminal this this is b and this is a so now listen it total wire length having like resistance 26 ohm but it is divided into 1 2 3 4 so resistance of each part will be 6 ohm 6 6 6 now what is this 12 plus 6 so that will be equal to 12 into 6 divided by 8 uh, it's all right 3 4 4 plus 6 that will be equal to 10 ohm is the resistance r equivalent 38 and that will be matching with b option 39 okay the condenser of capacity and uh, charge to 10 volt its energy is equal to so energy stored in a condenser is given by half cv square you can substitute half c is 50 micro minus 100 because v is 10 square and this comes out to be simply solving 50 divided by so 2.5 multiplied by 30 it will be like uh, simple minus 3 joule and that will be your matching with option a question number 40 as shown in the figure a very thin sheet of aluminium here you need to keep in mind is very thin sheet very thin sheet so very thin sheet actually like we write c is given by a epsilon not divided by d minus t is it or d minus t plus t by k we know k for a conductor is infinity so this term is becoming zero and here because it's given very thin so t will be also like equal to what almost tending to zero so your capacitance will remain constant or even you can go by electric field also electric field will remain constant so potential drop will remain constant charge is remaining constant because it's isolated capacitor that's why c will remain constant so here option will be in case of 40 c will be your right answer next 41 force acting upon a charged particle cap between the plate of the charge condenser is f if one plate of the condenser is removed so force is given by q into e and uh, e is equal to sigma by epsilon naught if one plate is removed plate is removed then e will become basically sigma by 2 epsilon naught so force will become f prime will be f by 2 and that is your force f by 2 will be matching with b option question number 42 Okay, a light bulb, a condenser and battery are connected together as shown in the figure. The switch is initially open. Alright, when a switch S is closed with which one of the following? So you need to remember here condenser and uh, like bulb connected in series. Condenser, what happened to condenser? When we are charging it, it charges within fraction of second, like very small interval of time. But yes, it takes some time, but the time duration to charge almost like 99% is very small. So it will charge immediately as you switch it on it will be charged 
and after that a condenser does not allow dc current so you can see after some time the uh, like after immediately once the uh, capacitor is charged no current will flow no bulb will glow you can check the option according to that bulb will light up for an instant when capacitor is start charging seems right bulb will light up when capacitor is fully charged no that, that is so a will be actually your right option here because initially charge will flow bulb will light and after uh, capacitor block dc current once fully charged so only up to it is charging it will allow the current and up to that time uh, like just for a moment your bulb will glow next is question, question number 43 so here are two cap spherical capacitor c1 and spherical capacitor c2 r1 r2 radius is r given and charge is given 15 micro coulomb 15 micro coulomb right so it will have some potential v1 and v2 right this is the condition given after two spheres are joined conducting via the charge on the smaller sphere so once two spheres are joined then total charge i can write will be like total charge q total it will be 30 micro coulomb but joining and separating joining and separating sphere then they will have let's say some charge q1 and q2 c1 and c2 so in this situation once they are joined together they will share the charge such a way that their potential become equal so potential become equal implies v1 v is equal to q1 by c1 should be equal to q2 by c2 and by conservation of charge i can write q1 plus q2 must be equal to q total or q nat so if i substitute from uh, q2 here because i need q1 so this is q1 plus this is c2 by c1 into q1 is equal to q total and this implies q1 is coming out to be c1 divided by c1 plus c2 multiplied by q total and q here c is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught r so i can write c1 by c2 this is also equal to r1 by r1 plus r2 multiplied by q total so r1 is how much it is given as 5 and 10 so it's 5 divided by 10 plus 5 multiplied by 30 so this is coming out to be 10 micro coulomb is the answer next question number 43 take more space 44 electric field between the plate of the parallel plate capacitor when connected to a certain battery is e naught all right if the space between the plates of the capacitor is filled by introducing a metal of uh, material of dielectric constant k without disturbing the battery concentration so here what is happening this is a condenser connected across a battery and this is the situation so electric field between this is e naught now what is happening it's filled with dielectric constant k but battery is kept connected so because battery is kept connected the potential drop across these cannot change so what will happen if it is trying to decrease it will supply more current more more charge so that potential drop across remain like the plates remain constant so that's why i can add if v is remaining constant then e is equal to what v by d so e will also remain constant so it will be e naught that will remain constant so find electric field after cell uh, like connected still will be, it will be e naught next question number 45 here option will be for 44 it, it will be your b option equivalent capacitance between this so this is simple circuit series parallel this is a b uh, all right there are two capacitor here and this is four microfarad four microfarad this is how much four microfarad this is uh, four also four four microfarad these two in series four plus four it will be two in series it will be two two plus four plus two in parallel so that will be equal to eight so c equivalent is coming out to be eight microfarad so this is all about your solution for dt04 paper i hope you have uh, like 
got your doubt cleared and I the speed was a little bit faster otherwise the video will be becoming very lengthy you try to like uh, learn it and it's still if you are having like, some problem I like just watch the video you can slow down the speed also and that's all thank you so much